Hey everybody, Rob Ferretti here, and there's a lot of common fallacies around vehicles. One of my favorites being that an exotic car is just your path to getting laid. That women are just going to be flocking to you, throwing bras and panties. Like, oh my god, he's got a fur... Doesn't work like that. It's much more dudes. They're like, dude, I love your car. Oh, awesome car. That's the common thing uh, I learned renting out exotic cars. That everyone thought that I'm going to go to LA, I'm going to rent a Ferrari, go to Vegas, rent a Ferrari. And ultimately, what ends up happening? bunch of dudes are like, dude, I love your car. You get a bunch of 15 to 25 year old guys all about your shit. But another fallacy that I want to talk about today is that it would be awesome to turn your street car into a race car that you could drive on the street. That sucks. And as much as you think it's awesome and the, like same thing with the exotic car, I'm not going to be able to talk you out of it, but let me show you how I turned my street car into a race car and how much fun it's not. Camera two. All right, now you'd normally think like your street car, you just go in, you turn the key, you're off to the races, nice and easy. This one, you don't. You, first thing you have to do, this one's got a battery cut. So I'm gonna take my battery cut, turn it on. <laughs> that just happened to go on, but that's completely coincidental. Then you gotta climb in and the roll cage makes that a little bit more difficult. Yeah. Ah. Nope, oh, nope, can't get my arm back there. Okay. All right. Now, next thing, steering wheel. Well, seems like a lot of fun, right? Now, scavenge pump. Power. Back it out. All right, so now got that taken care of. Started my car out of it. Pretty cool, right? Badass car. Now I want to put my windows down because it's a hot day. And if you watch David Patterson's review on this car, the windows weren't working because the switch is broke because the roll cage broke this, blah, 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 blah. Long story short, here's my solution. Got a battery. And let's see, it's I think the other way. Go to that, to that. Nope, hold on. It's my window switch. Let me get out of this delicate beast because that's fun. Who doesn't like to get in and out of a race car? And let me put my windows down. Boom. Simple as that. Now I guess I could just keep that right here in the door here. But that works for both windows. Now, oh, you know what? I got to bring a box to the post office. Let me, uh, let me go get that box. And you know what? Let me take the top off, which could normally go in there. It's normally a button to push on the key fob. Yep, nothing. So I got to go in and do it manually. Now, I would, look, I'm going to make it easy on myself and actually take the roof off. You can't do this with a fixed roof coupe. It's a little bit more difficult. But the wing makes this back thing very heavy, so you can't pop that trunk so let me take the top off, which is terrific. Who doesn't like to do that? Okay, now I gotta get in the back to pull the latches to pop the trunk, which let me just close that. And luckily I can just climb in the top here. Because why not? And, and I know you're judging me because of this seat here, because this was actually the better of the two seats. I got another one of these. It's actually, it's just not installed yet. It's here though. So I got to get in the back and pull those little, some little cables in the back to pop the hatch. And I got to sort of push it up with my, yeah. Do 
You better want to pull that up, buddy. Yeah. Yeah, see? And then I got this thing, which I... Which I use to keep it from closing, which allows me... Safety first, everybody. <laughs> Which allows me to then go get my box. Box. <laughs> Off to the post office. We'll have to seal this up over there. There's nothing in it. Open my trunk. <laughs> it's a little heavy. Put the box in, move the bar out, which I'm not going to do right now because that bar makes it easier to get in and out of. Close it, then I can go to the post office. Now, tops off nice day, that's good because I don't have air conditioning anymore. I don't have air conditioning, I don't have a heater core. Heat, heat you don't need, this thing generates plenty of it. But I also don't have a radio, what's up with that? Now, you'll see there's a button down there. It says cool. And everybody should have one of those. You know when you're having like a bad day and you're like, oh man, I'm a little bummed out, I'm a little depressed. Flip that button, I'm like, I'm cool. I'm just kidding, it's the cool shirt in the back. And without air conditioning, you need some way to regulate your body temperature so you don't die. And David Patterson just reviewed this car and I didn't have my window motors, i.e. battery to lower the windows for them at the time. Uh, but you would normally put on your cool shirt, which is this. And what this does is, and if you've seen any of my Bull Run Mustang videos with Matt Farah in the Cobra R, which also did not have air conditioning, you put this on, you put ice water in there, and it cycles ice water all over your body. And as awesome as it sounds, it's twice as good as you can imagine. It keeps you cooler than anything. You do not sweat. You, you feel like a million dollars. You are in your Zen place. If you've never been in a Zen place before, you put one of those on, you're going to find a Zen place. You'll know exactly what I'm talking about. But that's not very practical. None of this is practical. And in your head, it's like, dude, that's badass. I want to have a car like that so I can sport it around. This is a occasional use car primarily for a racetrack. You do not want to drive this on the road too often. If you do, it's local. It's not road trips. I've completely destroyed that. It's a lightweight race car. This is full retard, so to speak. When, when, when there's that point of diminishing return where you're like, you know, I slapped the bolt on supercharged first headers, you know, just headers and take exhaust. Hey, you know, it needs a cam. Let me throw a cam in there. Oh yeah, cam was nice. Let me swap the heads. Now I got a heads and cam package. You know what? I think I, gotta, uh, I think I gotta step up my game a little bit. Let me just throw a blower, low, low boost, low boost. All right, let's crank the boost up a little bit. Oh, pop my motor. No, but, uh, you know what, I'm gonna put a forged motor in there. I'm not gonna break it. I mean, who would put a stock motor in there? Forged motor. Oh, then I just snapped my drive shaft. Oh, it just blew out my, my axles. My differential's cooked now. Oh, you know what, I gotta beef up my transmission because I just bent the shift fork. Then you get this. That's what happens. That, that simple like bolt-ons becomes this if you don't mitigate that and prevent that from happening. And when you get this, you have a car, which I love, but it's just not very usable as a daily driver. And to prove that, I'm gonna daily drive this thing for a week. And that's gonna be another video because right now I'm showing you all the fabulous things about this car that make it unique and completely not usable on a daily basis. But before we swap out the wiring harness, this is going to be my daily driver. Not that, not that, not that, not that. None of these. I'm going to drive this for a week and see how amazing it is. So we'll drive this race car on the street. I will, I will, I'm going to love it. I know I'm going to love it. It's going to be awesome because this is my, this is my baby. Um, yeah. I, if there is never, I mean, anyone that's built a project car is like, dude, I know what you're saying. Everyone who hasn't, it's like, you pussy. Like, I could do that. That's no big deal. I'd love to do that to my car. I'd love to. Don't do it. Like, I don't know why. Like, like, this car, of all the money invested in this car, it's worth virtually nothing. 
and it's worth more to me than it would be to somebody else. That's why I can't sell it. But take my word for it. Not very practical. Uh, you shouldn't turn your street car into a race car because this. Um, but it's fast as hell and it's a lot of fun. So we're going to take it to Vegas and I'm going to spank uh, Rob Dom, Dave Patterson, and some other guys. But until that happens, uh, I'll daily drive it. I'll show you what that's like. Maybe take a couple of people for rides, you know, to do the huge. But uh, yeah, not, uh, not, a, not a good look for, for an everyday car. You better, better make sure you have A, an everyday car, and B, another sports car if you're going to have a car like this in your garage. That is my advice. Please take it. And you're, I, I, I know we're, we're idiots as creatures. We're men. It's like, yo, stay away from that chick. You go right towards that chick. It's just what you do. And the advice is good. And you know it's good. You know deep down inside with every fiber of your being, it's like, I should listen to that dude. But you're not going to. So show me your projects. Uh, email me over your mistakes. I, I know uh, everybody who's been through it can be like, uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh, yeah, yeah, we did that one twice. Race cars do not belong on the street. Although this is plated, registered, and sort of legal, it's just, damn, don't do it. Subscribe. Uh, you'll see the gonna be a fun week it's uh it's august august in new york it's pretty warm and i got this stay tuned